Good morning and welcome to Sunday School with Agape Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. I'm Reverend Troy Roland, and today we're going to be talking about Ezekiel, street preacher to the exiles. <laughs> Ezekiel, street preacher to the exiles. Took me a long time to practice how to say that, so, <laughs> so you'll bear with me. Let's start off with a word of prayer. Dear loving Heavenly Father, we invite you into our minds, our hearts, and our souls this morning, Lord. We're asking you to take away all those things, Father, that cloud us, Father, and keep us from listening to and understanding your word, Father. May you place it in our hearts and in our souls and in our minds always. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we pray and we thank thee. Amen, amen, and amen. Ezekiel, the street preacher to the exiles. <laughs> And as always, if you like these videos, give me a thumbs up and uh, hit the subscribe button down in the bottom so that way you don't miss any of them. I'm going to start by reading the In Focus. And the In Focus says, Alex and Andrew grew up watching their father, Mason, come home drunk. Sometimes Mason would scream at their mom or them or sometimes just go to bed and sleep it off. They saw him miss work because of hangovers and then have nothing to do in the evening but drink some more. When Andrew moved out of the house, he prided himself on how he could drink responsibly. He would go out for drink with the guy, drinks with the guys and after work and enjoy himself at a weekend party. It was hard living on his own, though, and soon his treat of a nightcap turned into more and more drinking. Andrew was worried about what he saw in his own life, what he saw in his own life becoming. But what could he do? Hmm. He had never had a positive role model to show him how to deal with life's hardships. His dad had been an alcoholic and now he was borderline too. What had anyone really expected to happen? <laughs> Alex watched his brother descended into the same path their father did. Even though Alex was the splitting image of his dad, they were very different in temperament. Knowing that he would likely have a problem with alcohol if he tried it, he decided to completely abstain. There were plenty of fun things to do with his friends that didn't involve drinks. The question for today says, How have you followed in your parents' footsteps? When have you decided specifically not to follow their example. Hmm. Alex decided not to. Andrew followed. Today we're coming from uh, the King Correction New Living Translation. Uh, we're coming from the book of Ezekiel. We're in chapter 18. We're starting at verse 1 and we're going down to verse 32. Uh, we're actually skipping over some verses. So we're going from verse 1 to verse 9. And then verse 30 to 32. Okay. Verse 1 says, Then another message came to me from the Lord. 2. Why do you quote this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, but their children's mouths pucker at the taste. That's a strange thing to say, isn't it? It's a very strange proverb. <laughs> The parents have eaten sour grapes, but their children's mouths pucker at the taste. That insinuates, or it, it says that when the parents eat the sour grapes, their children, who the grapes never touch their mouths, taste it. That's weird. Now, I've heard all this mumble jumbo about all these people who are who can feel this because their parents did it or feel this because it's when eh, there might be some truth to it. I have no clue. But we won't know until we get to heaven. But to say what the parents did reflects that deeply upon the children. Yeah, my parents ate stuff that I can't eat. <laughs> so to say that I can taste it is kind of absurd. Hmm. But the meaning of that, I'm drinking coffee this morning, but the meaning of that basically says uh, what Andrew is going through right now in his life. Him and, him and Alex. Uh, Andrew is tasting the sour grapes of his, his father's eating. 
So he's having no issue doing that. <laughs> he's just following his father's, father's footsteps. So he's only doing what's natural, someone would say. Uh, but, and I know I'm having a difficult time with this this morning. But, um, but I have to say that that's a wrong attitude. It truly is. We blame our parents for some things. We blame our parents for other things. We, but we can't blame our parents for doing what they did and then us doing it behind them. Alex proved it. He abstained. <laughs> and I'm going to show you why. Well, the Lord's going to show you why here in just a short bit. Um, I'm going to read verse 2. And then I'm going to read verse 3 again. Well, I'm going to read verse 2 again. And then I'm going to read verse 3. So verse 2 says, Why do you quote this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, but the children's mouths pucker at the taste. 3. As surely as I live, says the sovereign Lord, you will not quote this proverb anymore in Israel. <laughs> Just because your parents did it, doesn't mean that you need to do it too. Basically is what he's saying. Verse 4. For all people are mine to judge, both parents and children alike. And this is my rule. The person who sins is the one who will die. Hmm. That seems to be very simple, doesn't it? it I don't care what you think. You can't blame your parents for what you do. If you choose to do something, then you choose to do it. I, I used to be a police officer. And people would always ask me, you know, like, hey, you arrest this person or you give this person a ticket, shoot this person, do whatever the case might be. And it was never my job to judge them. Police officers don't judge. If they arrest you because you did something wrong, that's all their job is. They write you the ticket because you were speeding. They don't condemn you or judge you. They're, they're not riding around. What is the name of that movie? Uh, judge Dredd, <laughs> if you've ever seen it. Uh, it was the, the, the officer and the judge all at the same time. Yeah, they, they don't do that. Well, they're not supposed to do that. They don't do that. So it's not their job. <laughs> but now here it is. God is telling us that you can't blame your parents for what you do. Because you make that choice. And I get it. You, We grow up in these things. And uh, psychologists say that if you grow up in a certain environment. But also it's been proven that if you grow up in a certain environment, you don't have to be in like that. I mean, I, I, I think of the stories of people like, like Oprah Winfrey. She grew up in a, a pretty horrible environment. She ain't turned out that way. <laughs> there are stories of those who were, 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 were in the same situation or even in worse situations. Those who are home, were, were born into a homeless state and now they live in mansions. So you can't say that. You can't say that your parents are are the reason why you no 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 you make and make you make your own decisions and you'll get judged by them by God. Judged for them by God. <clears throat> Difficult time this morning now. <laughs> Let us move on because I could be here all day long. Um, verse five. Suppose a certain man is righteous and does what is just and right. Six. He does not feast in the mountains before Israel's idols or worship them. He does not commit adultery or have intercourse with a woman during her menstrual period. 7. He is a merciful creditor, not keeping the items given as security by poor debtors. He does not rob the poor, but instead gives food to the hungry and provides clothes for the needy. 8. He grants loans without interest, stays away from injustice, is honest and fair when judging others. 9. And faithfully obeys my decrees and regulations. Anyone who does these things is just and will surely live, says the Sovereign Lord. So, I'm, I'm reading this. 
And what I'm hearing is God is going to judge you according to what you do. He, he's not worried about what somebody else did. <laughs> he's going to judge you according to what you do. So if you choose to worship somebody else's idols, if you choose to, 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 to ignore those who are needy, if you choose to be the guy who wants to beat up on somebody else after you've been forgiven of your debt. Whew, yeah, I know that's what I'm talking about. Uh, God's going to judge you. We as people, we don't do that. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> My coffee has got me going this morning. Uh, <laughs> let's go down to verse 30. This is going to be a short one today. Uh, verse 30 says, Therefore, I will judge each of you, O people of Israel. According to your actions, says the sovereign Lord, repent, turn from your sins. Don't let them destroy you. Woo! You know, that, that deserves to be read again. Verse 30. Therefore, I will judge each of you. I, the Lord, will judge each of you. O oh, people of Israel, according to your actions, says the Lord, he's going to judge you. <laughs> Repent and turn from your sins. Don't let them destroy you. It, if you grew up, <laughs> I remember a story when I was, I was young, and I wish I could remember the little kid's name, but it was a book that we used to read in elementary school. And it was about this little dirty kid. And he would wash one part of his body. But, of course, by the next time he would wash a different part of his body, the first part was already dirty, dirty again. <laughs> so, so, but it didn't stop him from, from doing anything. He never stopped. He just kept washing one part. And he would clean his whole body, but the dirt <laughs> always would win, so to speak. So, think of this. Repent and turn from your sins. Don't let them destroy you. You repent. Your parents can't repent for you. Your life situation can't repent for you. Your idols can't repent for you. You have to repent. You. You have to make the choice and the decision not to fall into the same hole. You do. Because God's going to judge you. It's not the other way around. You don't get to judge God. God's going to judge you. Hmm. Verse 31. Put all your rebellion behind you and find yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O people of Israel? Hmm. Put all that stuff behind you. But isn't, I wish I could remember what the saying is, but it's something like, you can't live backwards. You understand what I'm saying? You can't live backwards. Let me read this next verse. I don't want you to die, says the sovereign Lord. Turn back and live. I don't want you to die. Turn back and live, says the sovereign Lord. <laughs> you can't live backwards. You can't live your parents' lives. God put you on earth to live your life. I don't care if you come from a family of alcoholics. I don't care if you come from a family of drug addicts. I don't care if you come from a family that does whatever. God put you on earth to do what he put you on earth to do. You, individually. Now, he, he didn't place you on earth to follow the suit of sinners. God didn't put you on earth to do that. That would be like saying that, that God put you on earth to sin. That sounds crazy. <laughs> God did not put you on earth to sin. Just like in our story, God didn't put Andrew or Alex on earth to sin. To say that is absurd. To think that is absurd. I'll tell you what. Why don't you, if you happen to find yourself in that situation, doing what your parents did, following down that, following down that same rabbit hole, 
in the same rabbit trap. Turn around. Repent. And do what God is telling you to do. Don't worry about what your family did. <laughs> Don't worry about what else is going on. Do what God is telling you to do. He has a better handle on your life than you ever will. Proof. It's in his word. That's all I have for today. Let us pray. Dear loving Lord, we thank you for the lesson on the day, Father. We ask that you might place it in our hearts and in our minds, Father. May you clear our minds of our past, Lord, and the situations we find ourselves growing up in. May you give us the strength, Father, to overcome all those different things, Father, that just try to cloud our minds, our hearts, and our souls, and the things, Father, that say that we need to be just like our parents. Not that all parents are bad, Lord, and we, we do appreciate you for giving us parents, but we don't have to be like that. We don't have to be in a sinful state. So, Father, this morning we're casting all our burdens at your feet. We're asking you to cleanse us once more, to forgive us of all our transgressions, and to give us the strength to forgive those who have transgressed against us. We love you, Father, and we thank you for today's lesson. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful and blessed day. And as always, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. And you, you, you like my shirt? <laughs> yeah, look what God has done. Uh, take, your, take a look today. Take a walk outside and take a look around and see what God has done. Look at a mirror and see what God has done. He's done for you what he wants you for you. You don't have to follow in anybody else's footsteps. Just look and see what God has done. God bless you. God keep you. Enjoy today's service and we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>